Afterward, book that you wrote, you're not supposed to write it, you know. You could end up at Guantanamo. The most shining example of Western democracy is Guantanamo. <laughs> Confessions of an Economic Hitman is a remarkable book. Because you get it out of the horse's mouth, what we are saying from the Masjid Mosque. <laughs> that they went to Indonesia, they went to Panama, they went to Colombia, they went to all of these countries to lend on interest in order to be able to enslave the people. And that's where we are today. How did this happen? After all, the Prophet said about the ulama, he said, al ulama wa rasatul anbiya that the status of the ulama, who I mean, and we're talking about the real, not the part-time, the real ulama. <laughs> These are a people who inherit the mission of the prophets, that's their status. So where were the ulama when this was happening? I mean, you, a lot of time to spend drinking cake, are we, isn't it? Where were they? We've got to make a trip to Egypt now. I notice we have an Egyptian here tonight. Sheikh Al Azhar. His name is Sheikh Muhammad Abdu. Very famous Sheikh. And he went on a trip to Europe at the end of the 19th century. Which Europe? The Europe which emerged after the French Revolution. The French Revolution, which had broken the back of the Christian Church, the Roman Catholic Church. Christian Europe had, had struggled against Riva. Indeed, the best book on Riva ever written was written by a, an English sheikh. What was his name? Never heard of that famous English sheikh who wrote on Riva? William? Shakespeare, of course. William Shakespeare. What is the name of the book? The Merchant of Venice. It's the best book on Riva I've ever written, I've ever read. Famous British Shaker. Shakespeare. Or you can read a more scholarly work. Shakespeare is nicer to read, but you could read William R. W. Tony, T. A. W-N-O-I and the, the name of the book is Religion and the Rise of Capitalism. I know when you get some time from the traffic of here to read, eh? yeah, yeah, it's a nice book to read. Religion and the Rise of Capitalism which tells you the story of how a Europe which was opposed to riba, to usury, was turned upside down to a new Europe which permitted usury for lending on interest. And uh, that which broke the back of the Christian church concerning riba was the French Revolution. And Muhammad Abdu went to Europe after that back of the Christian church had been broken and the river based economy had emerged full blown in Europe. And secondly, Europe had a political system which was like the Khilafah. Yes, Khilafah recognized Allah's sovereignty <coughs> and Europe recognized Allah's sovereignty. Allah's sovereign and he appointed the church to be his representative, his Khalifa. So the Pope represents him. It's called the divine right of kings. So Europe had his Khilafat. And this was broken by the French Revolution. And a new conception of state emerges. It's a secular state. Which declares the sovereignty is no longer up there. It's not down here. Wake up. We are now sovereign the people. This is the Europe 
that Muhammad Abdu went to visit. And when he saw that Europe, Muhammad Abdu, you're not going to believe this one, he returned to Egypt to tell the Egyptian people, I went to Europe and I <laughs> I found Islam. <laughs> no Muslims. I went to Europe and I found Islam. But no Muslims. If ever there was a sheikh with eyes with which he could not see, who is Muhammad Abdu? It is such a pity. So when he came back to Egypt, he said, I went to Europe and I found Islam, but no Muslims. And I've come back to Egypt to find Muslims, but no Islam. <laughs> yes. And the Egyptian people failed to crucify him. <laughs> he compounded his error. Compounded his error. When the British in, in Egypt created a marvelous institution called the Egyptian Post Office. And you know how efficient the British are. So you're going to now have a, a mission an efficient system of mail delivery all over Egypt. But the British said that this must be a public company. The funds to establish the post office and run the post office must come from the people. And the people should recognize the value of this institution. So why don't you invest in the institution? But you and I know that if you invest, it must be on the basis of if the company makes a profit, you share in the profit. But if the company suffers a loss, you share in the loss. That business. But no, this one was like a fixed deposit. Because when you invest in the post office, you're going to get a guaranteed fixed return on your investment. A guaranteed fixed return on your investment. Come rain or come sunshine. You can get it. With a fixed deposit. There is no risk here. It's a risk-free investment. But Sheikh Al-Azhar gave fatwa. Halal. Sheikh Al-Azhar gave fatwa. Halal. And so Al-Azhar University to this day still declares that bank interest is not real. Why? Because look at the good things that the banks are doing. Putting up all those skyscrapers. Aren't you proud of them? <coughs> Every shopping mall you have out there. Huh? It's the banks. Insurance companies, they do. You should be proud of that. Huh? And so to this day, we have this abominable situation that we have fatwa from such eminent, eminent institutions that bank interest is not required. The question that we ask is, where were the ulama? I mean, that's a long time to be drinking tea, Are Where were the ulama? I'm answering that question. Thankfully that you have other ulama who say, no, that's wrong. Muhammad Abdu or no Muhammad Abdu bank interest is river. And then you have the other one now, where then Muhammad alayhi salatu was sometimes go to the shop and buy goods and would not have the money to pay. So the shopkeeper will give him some time to pay. There's an elegant term to describe this transaction. It's called a credit transaction. I thought credit is what you got when you hit the exam, huh? <laughs> but now it's, it's called credit. Yeah, I'm jacking terminology here. Uh, credit. 